So yesterday, probably like most of you, I watched Shane Dawson's video on the return of Eugenia Cooney, followed by then watching Jacqueline's video about the whole situation. Um, and honestly, even before I saw Jacqueline's video, I just got a bad feeling from everything I saw and heard of Eugenia in Shane's video. And I, I really, I didn't want to make a video about it. I didn't want to be that person who seems to be crapping all over what should be like a really positive, optimistic situation. Um, but I was talking to someone on Instagram earlier today who, like me, used to have an eating disorder. And it's becoming increasingly clear to me that all of us who are part of the eating disorder world or have been, we can read very clearly between the lines what's going on. And unfortunately, anyone who doesn't have an eating disorder, all that most people are seeing is Eugenia looking healthy and she looks gorgeous. You know, she, she literally looks 10 years younger. She looks so young and so sweet and it's wonderful to see. But that doesn't mean that an eating disordered person is magically better. So the main reason I want to make this video really is to just kind of enlighten people and educate people a little bit. So many of you are fans of Eugenia and maybe leaving her messages and things like this, but more than that, it is pretty likely that at some point in your life you will know someone who has an eating disorder, maybe you have one yourself, and I think it's very harmful um, for people to believe that, that someone is recovered or in recovery when actually it's not going the way they think it is. I just, I just think we, we need, we need some truth here. So the, the first thing I want to point out, and honestly, this is something that the psychiatrist is her name, Katie. I think I'm, I'm going to call her Katie because I think that's her name. Apologies if I'm wrong. The psychiatrist Katie, who was with Shane uh, when they went to see Eugenia, um, she should have mentioned this before they went to see Eugenia. Maybe she did, and they just cut it out of the video. But um, the fact she talked about with Shane, do not comment on her appearance. Don't tell her she looks great. Don't tell her she looks better. Don't tell her she looks healthy. Um, that that was a very good thing to say. That is very true. Do not comment. Um, because honestly, even hearing, oh, you look so good. Oh, you look so healthy. All an eating disordered person in early recovery hears is, oh my God, it's really noticeable. Everyone can tell that I'm fatter. That is, that it, oh my God. Um, Later on in recovery, when people are more stable and they've been at a stable weight for a while, then occasionally you can deal with hearing like an occasional really genuinely heartfelt, I'm glad you're doing better, I'm glad things, you know, you seem happier, things like that. You, you can deal with that further on, but in early recovery, yeah, you don't touch it. However, the thing she should have said was that don't base your assumptions on what she looks like just because she looks better does not mean that she necessarily is. Um, and this is really, really harmful with eating disorders, but I think honestly with any mental illness, even if it's something like depression or anxiety, and maybe when you're doing badly, you know, you're, you don't wash your hair, you don't really change your clothes, you, you just kind of look a bit run down. If someone sees you on a day when, you know, your hair's clean, you're wearing clean clothes, and they assume you're fine, they assume, oh, everything's fine, and then they start dumping demands on you because oh you're fine so you must be up to doing everything now to see an eating disordered person looking better and assume that's it they're magically better there's nothing to worry about what are you going to be doing with the rest of your life now move on it's quite stressful if you are still struggling with those thoughts and things which is very natural you know it's, it's, she's very new in recovery of course she's still going to be struggling with things so she should the katie should have said don't base your assumptions on what she looks like. Don't assume she's fine just because she looks a bit better. Uh, you know, and the, the thing to also add here is that she hasn't just decided I'm going to get better and, you know, been at home getting better. She has been in a facility where she was made to eat. I dare say if she had refused to eat, they would have tube fed her. She was involuntarily committed. She could not leave. So the, the fact that she's gained weight, some weight and, and looks a bit better is, is really not, not a marker of her doing better internally. I mean, it's certainly a good sign that she chose to stay on at the facility for longer than she was forced to. That's a very good sign. But obviously, when it comes to people who've been hospitalized for an eating disorder or an addiction, 
everyone should know that the real work begins when you get home because as I've said many times before eating disorders are very very similar to alcohol and drug addictions it, it is very much the same thing and having you know experienced both things it is very much the same thing and I think anyone who's known someone who's had say an alcohol addiction and they've gone to rehab you don't expect them to come home and like be magically cured you know it's, it's not like you've just sent your car to the garage and it's come back and now it's running and that's fine you don't have to think about it anymore the real work begins when you get home and that's the bit that concerned me when it came to Eugenia in Shane's video on many levels um, the first thing that really stuck out to me was that she still seemed to be deeply in denial honestly that everything she was saying was was basically oh I just just I don't know just just wasn't really eating enough I guess you know pretty much it was pretty much like she was saying oh I, I just just kind of forgot to eat didn't really realize didn't really realize I wasn't eating enough um <laughs> and uh that's physically not possible you know to to reach that level of emaciation and that level of underfeeding yourself for that many years um you know because me when I was eating disordered I was physically kind of similar to her that I was naturally thin um so I you know I didn't really have things like hair loss I didn't have problems with my teeth I didn't have a lot of health issues um I lost the weight quite easily um or you know all the things that she had but nonetheless whoever you are if you underfeed yourself that severely for that long you will become fixated on food they've done starvation experiments on a bunch of men who were completely mentally healthy physically healthy had no issues around food and they put them on a very low calorie diet for however long all of them became fixated on food they were constantly talking about food with each other collecting recipes sharing recipes um they started hiding food they started eating in very ritualistic ways cutting things up and shoving them around the plate all the things you expect with an eating disordered person you will get just by underfeeding someone even if they don't have eating disordered thoughts so for Eugenia to say oh you know I just basically forgot to eat just, mm, just didn't really know I wasn't eating enough it's physically impossible she, you know and it's it's the same lines that she was giving out all the time you know before on her live streams and anything if people asked her why are you that thin she, you know she would just say oh it's just the way I am you know it's just, I'm just just this is how my body is she, that was really still the same line she was giving you know she wouldn't admit to any anorexic thoughts um, it was still very much, oh, I didn't really realise, um, you know, and talking about her weight, she said, oh, you know, I hadn't, hadn't really been weighing myself, which there are some anorexics who aren't that fixated on the number, it's possible that she wasn't weighing herself, but to say I hadn't really noticed how much weight I'd lost and how bad it had got, again the denial is astounding, I mean, as I mentioned, you know, I, I made a video about her well over a year ago, and I mentioned the fact that Eugenia has always shot her videos in a very unique way in that, you know, most YouTubers who are just talking, they sit and they talk and this is how much you see. However, Eugenia has always made an effort to stand way back from the camera so you can see her entire body. She likes to move around, twist around, show herself off from all different angles. You know, she she seems very, very fixated on, you know, body checks on camera, on filming herself and on showing herself and on flaunting her body. Obviously, she you know, she was watching that footage, editing that footage. Um, I have no doubt that she probably filmed videos privately to, to see more of her body from more angles because it's the kind of thing that anorexics do. You you want to see what you look like. You, it's, it's, you know, a fixation. So obviously, you know, she saw her body and she was clearly honestly very proud of what her body looked like to film all these videos even when she was just talking she had to have her full body on camera um you know plus the the millions the literal millions of comments from people saying you're dying you're dying you're dying the fact that you know the the like bars on all her videos were plummeting the fact people were saying i'm never buying from this company you're sponsored by because they're putting their clothes on an anorexic model there's, I'm sorry, but there's there's no way you can be doing all those things and, and oh, just I had well I hadn't stepped on a scale, so I didn't realise how thin I was. The the denial is worrying. 
Um, but more than that, I was concerned by her speech. Um, the it's you know it had been mentioned a lot in the last few videos she'd made people who'd commented on the way her vocabulary has declined that you know when she first started making videos she she had quite a kind of sharp sense of humor and her speech you know it, it was it was like a bubbly teenager but you know she she had a reasonably expansive vocabulary whereas towards the end of when she was on youtube before her vocabulary was getting very limited, you know, it was, it was all ums and likes and oh this is so cool, so cool, oh this is so cute, so cute, oh this likes, likes, so cute. Those were really, you know, and no disintended, that's just what happens when you starve your brain. That most anorexics you see when they're that starved, they become quite kind of dead-eyed and monosyllabic and there's not much energy in their voice and all of that, but as Shane and, and Katie commented on, you know the, the kind of the rising of, of Eugenia's voice as she tries to hype herself into like I've you know I've got to be on I've got to be in camera mode um I think this this very limited repetitive vocabulary you were hearing was someone who as me and my friends used to put it anorexia has eaten their brain trying to come across as happy and alive but they don't have the cognitive capacity right now to to do that so the vocabulary becomes very limited and you, you know, usually when you start feeding someone again, they come alive and that, you know, their personality comes back and the words come back. And I didn't see any of that in Eugenia. Her, you know, her vocabulary and her speech seemed very stilted, very limited, very, yeah. Um, which makes me think there, there can't be a lot of energy going on in her brain right now. Um, which does worry me as to what is her treatment plan at the moment because with eating disorder treatment it is not normal that a person goes inpatient and then just comes home that's it you're fixed usually with eating disorder inpatient treatment it's a gradual thing you will be you know if you're doing well enough you will be allowed home for like an evening or a day trip and then you'll come back and they'll see how you've done if you've lost weight if you're dehydrated if you've clearly not been eating and drinking they're not going to let you out again for a while but if it goes well you know they let you go home overnight and they let you go home for a weekend and a little while and it's a gradual thing and even once you're released to go home usually you're still going to be in some kind of outpatient treatment whether that's daily whether that's twice a week um, or at the very least you're supposed to be seeing a therapist because like I say it's not like you've just sent your car to the mechanic and now it's back and it's fixed it's it's a mental illness and as they always say about eating disorders it took a long time for you to get this sick it's going to take just as long for you to get wholly better so and that was something that that wasn't mentioned you know what what's going on because the only thing she really said along these lines was that her self-esteem has never been very good and and that's something i am still working on but she didn't say it in in a kind of that's something i'm still working on with my treatment team or that's something i'm still working on in therapy you didn't get the feeling that anything was ongoing that's slightly concerning the other thing that kind of worried me was when shane asked her what you know what are you going to be doing now what's what's next for you you know with youtube and she really didn't didn't seem to have anything solid it, it was kind of like well you know I, I like makeup and i like fashion i kind of want to focus on those i guess maybe which obviously really are things she's been doing before you know she's done a lot of kind of makeup related videos a lot of fashion related videos um but particularly regarding the fashion i would have expected that to be slightly longer of a comment in the obviously all her fashion videos and anyone who's doing a try on haul the whole thing is people seeing it on your body if you're in early recovery and you're going to be gaining weight and all of that I don't think there is any anorexic out there who would be wholly comfortable filming their body as they as they regain weight 
showing off clothes on it for millions of people to judge because apart from anything you don't regain weight you know when you've been at that low of a weight and you regain the weight you don't regain it normally and perfectly it's not like it just comes back on in this lovely sculpted way um, it tends to go directly to your face and to your stomach and obviously those two places make people very self-conscious nobody wants anything on their stomach and your face you know it's the first thing people see and it's one of the reasons that people comment so much they say oh my god you look so good and you immediately think my face looks like a lump of moon um, <laughs> um, so you know you regain it in, in a very strange way and it takes a long time for everything to distribute normally um, so I would have thought diving straight into fashion is, is something that's going to be quite difficult to do but more than that it, it was it was the sort of the confusion and the apathy in in response to that question that anyone I've known who's recovered from an eating disorder or an addiction when they've been in successful early recovery they are full of ideas about what they want to do now you know that that chapter of the book is closed they are so happy to be free they are so pissed they wasted so many years of their life and even if they you know it doesn't have to be like a huge future plan it doesn't have to be like right I've decided going to university I'm going to become a doctor that's what I'm doing you know it doesn't have to be something like that but usually you are raring with things you want to do with your life now particularly with eating disorder recovery when you've been that starved everything it's like you're living in black and white you don't have the energy for anything your life is is so small and so restricted to nothing but food and calories and weight and when you put food back into your brain seriously it, it's almost like a drug it's it's like energy euphoria everything's back in color again you feel like you could jump over the moon um you know your body's just like this is amazing i've got energy again and uh and you do you want to go and do things with that um if the recovery is successful i mean you know taking myself for an example last year when i'd stopped drinking after like a year and a half of ghastly alcoholism um you know it, it wasn't like i was really changing what i was doing with my life but i still had a lot of changes of direction you know, i was constantly overflowing with ideas for videos for ideas for writing you know i was overflowing with like this is this is a new start this is and that's how people tend to be when it's successful so to be i've just come home from impatient and don't really know what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be doing much the same thing i've been doing kind of makes you think she's probably going to be doing much the same thing she's been doing in you know the eating disorder sense as well um but i I, th I think the main thing to say really is that just like drug and alcohol addiction somebody going to inpatient or going to rehab it's it isn't it isn't a miracle fix you know and, and just like with depression getting somebody on an antidepressant it's not necessarily oh you're on pills now well that's it you're fine one stint in in rehab or in an inpatient facility does not make somebody cured and honestly just just from the people i've known with eating disorders which is, is literally hundreds of people the people i've known who've actually recovered the most successfully haven't done it in inpatient or rehab i don't think i've known a single person go inpatient or go to rehab come out uh, sorry one person one person i've known go inpatient go to rehab come out and that's it it's, it's an upward upward swing they're done with it and they're moving forward and there's no wobbles there's there's nothing only one person have i ever known um to do that most people they come out maybe they're okay for a bit and then it all falls to bits again or they fall apart immediately or they just become a revolving door inpatient person it really you know like people say about all these things it has to come from the person it has to come from them you know, not to say that Jacqueline and her friends did anything wrong in forcing Eugenia inpatient I mean I think it was I think it was a wonderful thing that people cared that much to do that for her and uh and you know honestly if I had been in their position I would have done the same thing um because the definition of insanity is doing exactly the same thing and expecting something to change you know leaving Eugenia to just keep running the hamster wheel where you can see she's going downhill and not not stick a spoke in the wheel you, you know she's just going to keep rolling till she dies whereas 
throwing some chaos into the mixture it might not work but at least there's some change there's a chance it's a gamble it might work it might not work but if it you know if it doesn't work at least you tried and I feel very much the same about my friend Gretchen who died from her eating disorder in 2014 that you know, I did try the tough love thing with her and I, yeah, I regretted that when she was dead. Um, I regretted harsh words and I wished I'd been a bit kinder, but equally if she died and I knew there were times when I wanted to speak up and I should have spoken up and I just didn't say anything, I would have kicked myself so much harder. And I think it's the same with them. They know they tried and whatever happens to her now, they tried, they did their bit, um, and I, you know, I think, I think that is something to thank them for, but, um, unfortunately, you, you know, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, kind of thing, you know, recovery has to be a, an internal click in someone's own head, and generally speaking, when I've seen people recover, usually they've done it at home, you know, with maybe a therapist, with outpatient, but, the home environment is is really the important thing you know that's that's where you've got to live and it's it's all very well while you're impatient you're blocked off from the world and you know you've got therapists looking after you all the time you've got people sitting with you while you eat you've got all the support in the world it's it's removed from reality and a large part of eating disorders is cutting yourself off from reality it's wanting to stay in childhood it's wanting to stay safe it's wanting to stay in control and being in a hospital environment can feel like that it can feel very, you know, everything's routine, there's a routine, you get up at a certain time, you get weighed at a certain time, you get fed at a certain time, everything's in a routine, there's no outer world, it's it's a very safe, safe feeling environment, um, you know, I've, I've never been impatient for an eating disorder, but, you know, I've been in hospital when things have been a bit disastrous, and it, it does, there's, there's a feeling of safety about it, um, but obviously, it, you know, this is why you're usually relate, released on a kind of gradual thing, you know, home visits, then outpatient, then some therapy, because you, you have to learn to deal with, with life in all its huge messiness. You have to learn to eat alone at home. You have to deal with your family, which is usually why in eating disorder treatment, I mean, obviously eating disorder treatment often involves younger people, um, but families really should have something to do with the treatment too, particularly if you're living with your family, they should know at the very least things to say, things to not say, things to press you on, things to leave alone, warning signs that things are going wrong and right and, and things that they're doing that are bad, um, uh, you know, and you, you very much get the feeling that, that things with her home life are not ideal uh you know and going back to the place where you got sick you know i, I think it's almost like a famous quote really isn't it that going back to the place where you got sick is, is very likely to make you sick again unless something drastically changes um you know and what jacqueline was saying about the way eugenia's life is controlled uh you know with having a driver who waits outside everywhere she goes and and having no control over her social life and even the house, you know, the, the house that presumably Eugenia's money largely pays for, it's mostly Eugenia's house and yet she seems to really have one room which is her entire world, you know, it's it's her live streaming room and her bedroom which I, I mean I assume it's where she sleeps, I assume it's not just like a kind of stage bedroom, um, you know, and th that in itself seems kind of strange and stressful to me to be to be that age in a house that you bought and to essentially be sleeping in your office because you know that's that's how it is um you know if you've got a huge live streaming setup where people are talking to you directly and often being quite rude to you and bullying you and th there's this whole stress attached to this this area and you're sleeping just over there that's a bit of a weird dynamic i mean it, it literally is it's, it's like if you work in an office imagine sleeping there too and how that would make you feel and you do wonder, you know, that this, this sort of lack of control, is, is that a fuel behind the eating disorder, that control is such a big thing? If you feel that your whole life is being controlled by other people, you know, as I did as a kid, you know, as a child of divorce, being shot up and down the country, not wanting anything to do with it, you know, having nothing to do with where I was sent on any particular weekend, having no control over anything, you 
seek to control what you can and, and that potentially still seems to be a loop she's stuck in but uh, anyway this is a long waffle uh, in essence I you know I don't I don't want to I don't want to you know doom laden this and say oh it's definitely going to go wrong it's definitely going to be a disaster I just think um, I'm concerned by the fact it seems that where's where's the continued support and yes people people who don't know about eating disorders don't don't try to rate somebody's state of mind based on what they look like on a particular day with eating disorders it is vastly deceptive most people with eating disorders their weight yo-yos like crazy because of the fact that you know that people do people put them impatient they gain weight or they try and recover on their own they gain weight or they switch behaviors and start binging for a while and gain weight people can can look better for for a variety of reasons and it doesn't necessarily mean anything um it's you've you've got to look deeper than that and yes you know it is it is lovely to see her looking so young um but you know the the way she was speaking and the things she was saying i didn't i didn't get a a wonderful uplifting recovery feeling from it you know what what can you do if if you're if you are a fan of eugenia and you want to help her i think honestly at this point you you've got to realize that there is essentially sod all you can do i mean the fact that her real life friends had to go and do so much you know had to concoct this this high level you know multi-coordinated spy mission basically to get her out of the house and get her to go to hospital the amount of effort that even her real life friends had to go to to get her help um if if you are simply you know a a stranger watching her online i think you've got to realize that there there is really nothing you can do i mean continue to be supportive continue to send her messages of love and support you know she did say that was helpful and you know speaking as someone who has had you know people send me things to my p.o box when things were crappy with me it, it is lovely it is heartwarming and it is lovely you know sometimes there are days that you, you just don't want to read comments you just don't want to deal with the world at all and you you just you know it it, it means you just can't but you know on the days that, that you feel open enough to even read things yes it, you know it, it is uplifting and anorexia does tend to have ties with depression and with anxiety and with other things you know anorexics much as she seems like a very happy person uh nobody nobody who's a genuinely happy person decides to do that to themselves so yes you know continue to to raise her up and try and be nice to her but ultimately realize there is not a lot you can do. The final thing I want to bring up actually is just regards her niceness. The fact that Shane talked a lot about, oh, you're such a nice person. Do you, do you ever get angry with anyone? You, you know, that again seemed like kind of a warning flag to me that certain things haven't been addressed in therapy or she hasn't allowed them to be addressed in therapy. Because honestly, being that nice is not healthy. It's not. Um, I, one of my friends to this day who is actually doing very badly with their eating disorder and I'm worried about them to the nth degree, but anyway, when she was young, just like Eugenia, she was the nicest person in the world. She actually got flamed <laughs> on the eating disorder board for being too nice. She's so fake, it makes me nauseous, she's so nice all the time. It was ridiculous. But anyway, she was very, very nice to everyone. and. I could see what it was doing to her, that when people were nasty to her, she didn't stand up to them, she didn't stand up for herself, um, she didn't give anybody a well-deserved fuck you mate, um, she took it out on herself instead, and that tends to be the thing with people who are too nice or too laid back, you know, and I, when I was younger people would describe me as very laid back, when, you know, if, if you know anyone with Asperger's, we are not laid back people, you know, things stress us out, we explode, but back then you know i would just nod and smile and be polite and just be quiet and just let everyone trample all over me and be super nice about everything and then go home and cut myself up or starve myself or binge and purge or whatever um being that nice is not healthy it you know you have to be able to set boundaries with people and tell people no or tell people 
that's really rude actually uh how about you bog off you know rather than saying oh mm, well actually that's a very nice top you're wearing actually and and thank you for talking to you you know the, the things you see her do on the, the live stream when people insult her she just eats the hatred and you know and no pun intended there you know she she just takes in the hatred and compliments them back and that seems very sweet but you know that comment has got to have got to her and it's going to be burning away in the back of her brain and she's probably going to take it out on herself and the friend i was talking about the one the too nice friend um when she actually for a while was doing better with her eating disorder for a while she kind of became a bit of a bitch and i was all for it i was like this is a good Thing. I love the fact that you have suddenly started telling everyone to go to hell because it was you know it was like all these years of repression all these years of like taking everything out on herself she suddenly was just like I'm not taking any shit from anyone and I was like this is a healthy step forward you know and for a while she was doing better with this I'm not going to be walked on anymore attitude so I, I think you know Eugenia's niceness um is is kind of a symptom honestly it, it's a symptom of taking too much too much burden on taking you know just taking in hatred taking it out on yourself and not being able to set boundaries of course i really hope that i'm wrong and i really hope there is continued support going on i do hope that she you know the the, the encouragement maybe that she gets from the shane video and all of this that it will make her think you know what i can do this um you know and obviously for her career nothing would be better for her career right now than for her to drop the denial let people in and it doesn't have to be everything she's about but if she did do a bit of a recovery journey on her channel you know she literally could be on national tv she could you know have a book you know be part of like a book writing on her recovery and all of this it, it would be huge for her career whereas i feel it will probably be terrible for her career if she continues to say nothing about the eating disorder could you know sort of goes back down on a downhill slither uh there is only so long that the world can keep watching a disaster without kind of becoming bored and drifting away and that's harsh but that's the truth of it um you know and i would love to see her step into a new chapter of her life and you know either either become a a genuine like wonderful paragon of recovery who's inspiring to people because there are so many anorexics who watch her for the inspiration you know that's that's the fact of the matter anorexics you, you know you've, you've got this this skinny girl dancing about in different outfits for you it's it's you know it's, it's like a thin inspiration wet dream but it would be amazing for those anorexics if they were you know this person they were watching to trigger themselves actually became a trigger to get better they actually saw her blossom and become beautiful and become successful and become you know a fully formed person instead of a caricature um that would be wonderful you know or she could she could just never talk about the anorexia but actually recover and do something completely different with her channel and with her life and and you know succeed that way that would be a lovely thing to see but at the moment reading between the lines it's a bit concerning it is interesting because you know shane usually digs so deep with people um you know and usually he makes like multiple part series uh or, you know on things and the eugenia cooney thing was such a big situation and had she been open you know it could have been all about well you know these are the things that triggered my anorexia these are the things that the are still ongoing the, there there is a lot to say about anorexia recovery so to have a very very short video that was really mostly uh you know stretched out scenes of shane in the car looking pensive and then we get to see eugenia and it's all very uh, oh look at my house you know the house is so interesting this, there's probably more talk about the house than about eugenia and you you think that's very shut down for for a, you know this is my big return this is my big recovery return and yet you know obviously there wasn't much material given that he could use 
Um, you know, and it, it does make me wonder how he felt about putting that video out because I'm pretty sure he must have realised, you know, th this is this is not the way this video should have looked. This is, you know, this is not the, the content percentages there should have been. Um, you know, it was about one thing, this much was about it, everything else was filler and, and building up drama for... Mm. Um, so I think it's an interesting situation, but anyway, I wish her the best and um, yes, I hope, I hope this is vaguely useful if you do have anyone in your life who has an eating disorder, um, just what to expect in recovery, that yes, people, people can recover wonderfully without going inpatient, without going to rehab, it's not necessary. Um, so long as you're careful about refeeding syndrome and all of that, you can educate yourself. You can do it from home. I, you know, I did it myself because the system in this country sucks and I, I would have been dead otherwise if I didn't do it by myself. But also when people have been to inpatient or rehab, don't expect them to come back and be fine. And if they look fine, still, still be worried about them and still try and keep them talking. Don't just assume it's over like that because that's we all know that's not how it goes with any mental illness ever um so yes anyway this is very long so i'm going to shut up and go away <laughs> bye bye